Oh, I don't know. Here's a clue. What year is it? <laughs> I cannot run a marathon. I am very out of shape. My biggest hobby is watching television. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Found my soulmate. <laughs> so watching uh, the History Channel the other night, and they were talking about the life of Christ. And then they said that we know nothing about Jesus' teenage years, and they were speculating why that was. I think I know. I think Jesus was probably just a typical 16-year-old know-it-all. <laughs> think about it. All teenagers think they know it all, but he really did? <laughs> that could not have been easy. He's probably at the family reunion. Doesn't he want to be there? His uncle comes up to him. Dang, Jesus, you're getting big, boy. How old are you now? And Jesus is like, oh, I don't know. Here's a clue. What year is it? <laughs> My favorite part about that is some of y'all didn't get that. And... Uh, <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> I have a friend who doesn't believe in God, but does believe in professional wrestling. <laughs> He's like, Brian, I'm just saying some of the stories in the Bible are a little too far-fetched for me. I'm like, all right, let me get this straight. Uh, you don't believe Jesus rose from the grave to save mankind from his sins, but you do believe the Undertaker rose from the grave to defeat mankind at WrestleMania. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense. I think sometimes we give God credit for stuff he doesn't even want credit for. Like uh, recently I had a friend pass away suddenly and my other friends were like, why did God have to take Jerry so soon? I guess he just need another angel in heaven. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah maybe. Um, also, Jerry ate McDonald's three meals a day. Uh, <laughs> Jerry did not take care of himself, and I think we got to meet him halfway. Uh, I'm just saying, if Jerry is an angel in heaven, he's not one of the ones that fly. Uh, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Maybe he does the books. Uh, <laughs> It's going to be different jobs, right? <laughs> I have been on uh, one mission trip with my church. Uh, I'm not Mormon, but um, excuse me. I'm not Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Yeah. I've had that stuff down my face all weekend. You guys want to get the message out. <laughs> No, it was a two-week mission trip. It wasn't two, two years. I learned after two weeks I'm not cut out to be a missionary. Uh, I had people losing their faith because of me, so. <laughs> and my friends think I had it easy because they went to Haiti and Honduras, and I went to Australia. And I think they had it easier because it's easier to impress people in those countries. I was in Sydney, Australia, one of the wealthiest cities in the world. You know how hard it is to convert people to your religion when they're doing better than you are? <laughs> I would be knocking on doors and I'm like, hey, hello, how are you? Um, wow, this is nice. <laughs> wow. Um, if you have a few minutes, I'd love to sit down with you and tell you how Jesus Christ changed my life. And if you have a few more minutes... <laughs> I'd love to sit down with you and see maybe how you could help me change my life. Uh, you are doing much better than I am. Uh, I drive for Uber and... He's got me in the afterlife, but you could really help me now. <laughs> A little bit about myself in my free time when I don't do comedy, I drive for Uber. So basically, I drive for Uber. <laughs> I'm an Uber driver. That's what I do. I even drive for Uber before shows, which is kind of my biggest fear. Is this one day I'll be driving before a show 
and they'll be coming to that show. <laughs> and we'll just ride together. <laughs> and we'll just both get out of the car. They're like, you're coming to the show too. I'm like, I am on this show. <laughs> I'm not doing well. <laughs> Now, I guess actually now I think about it, my biggest fear is I'll just get heckled one night by some guy who's had too much to drink. The comedy club will call him an Uber, and I'll have to drive my own heckler home. <laughs> that would be worse. I used to drive after shows. I won't be doing that tonight. Um, that was not a good idea. People commenting about my show while I drove them home. Even worse when they didn't bring it up. One night I drove a lady home, 20 minutes just in silence. I said, did you have a good time? Yeah, it was all right, it was all right. What'd you think of my jokes? Hey, could we turn the radio up? Uh, <laughs> but I am, I'm out there on the roads and it makes me think that I am ready to try self-driving cars. I really am. Some people say, oh, those sound dangerous. Well, so are we. <laughs> I mean, I think we're almost to the point where we're gonna look back. Our grandkids kids will definitely look back and be like, we lived in the Wild West. <laughs> They're gonna be like, so you just steered your own car all by yourself. You did. Without any computer assistance. Yeah. And what gave you that authority? <laughs> well, I took a test when I was 16 and that's pretty much it. So what would you guys do if you got tired? Uh, we just roll down the window, stick our head out. <laughs> This is unbelievable. So you guys had to actually wait to get where you were going before you could look at your phone? Oh no, we still looked at it. <laughs> that didn't stop us one bit. Not one bit. I'm 47 years old, never married, but do have a serious girlfriend now. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> she's 42, never married. And we actually dated like nine years ago and uh, just didn't work out and we went our separate ways. And for some reason, my friends think that's a romantic story. They're always like, oh, did you guys go your separate ways because you knew the timing wasn't right? And that someday God would bring you two back together? We're like, no. <laughs> we went our separate ways because we both thought we could do better. <laughs> We were wrong. <laughs> After nine years of trying to upgrade, we were like, we better put a tourniquet on this. Stop the bleeding. This is the best either one of us is ever gonna do. I'm glad to be off the dating scene. I mean, I'm sure I'll be back out there eventually, but uh, it's nice to have a break. And, uh, <laughs> because I was never good at it. Um, I read in a magazine, the two best places to meet single women. Uh, number one, the dog park. I thought, okay, that's cool, I can try that. Let me give you guys some advice if you wanna try this. Uh, you really need a dog. <laughs> if not, girls just find you creepy. Number two, a running or hiking trail. Now, here's the problem with that, I don't run and I don't hike. If I can't talk to a girl standing still, how am I gonna to talk to her when we're both in motion? It would basically just look like I'm chasing her. <laughs> My buddy gave me some advice. He said, you just go on, get on ahead and wait for them to come to you. Oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm just gonna step off this remote area of the trail <laughs> and hide behind this bush. <laughs> And then when she comes around the corner, just step out and say, hello! Would you like to go out sometime? And that's when I play a game called How Do I Find My Car After Being Pepper Sprayed. <laughs> you can tell I'm getting older. Um, I was recently diagnosed with sleep apnea. And if you don't know what that is, that's when you stop breathing while you sleep, causing you to constantly wake up. It's also the only condition that your friends don't think is a real thing. <laughs> I know this because I travel with other comedians and we sometimes have to share hotel rooms and when I bring out that CPAP, they got questions. <laughs> I 
They're like, now why do you need that? Because I stop breathing when I sleep. And they're like, well, just don't. <laughs> just keep breathing. One guy tried to show me. He's like, you look, when you lay down, just start like this. <sighs> you just keep going. Like it was a TED talk. Like I just needed motivation to breathe. I'm getting more forgetful. I forget stuff all the time. You ever texted yourself a reminder and then forget the reminders from you and get an argument with yourself? Other night I was going to bed, checked my phone before I went to bed, had a text message from earlier in the day, said, call Kevin about pest control. I didn't recognize the number. So I'm like, who knew I needed to call Kevin? So I texted back, who is this? I immediately got a reply, who is this? I was like, well, that's kind of rude. Um, but this guy was right on top of that text. He was ready. Uh, I was like, wow. He must have just been waiting. So then I reply back, no, you texted me first. And he replied back, no, you texted me first. And this went on way longer than I'm proud to admit. At one point I called him an idiot, which is basically me calling myself an idiot. The next day I show it to my girlfriend and she said, technically you're both right. <laughs> I'm not smart. Other sign I'm getting older is just little things annoy me. Facebook, I'm sick of Facebook. Instagram story, I don't wanna know your story. <laughs> Facebook live, I didn't even wanna see you live. <laughs> Much less on Facebook live. But at least once a week I accidentally click on someone's Facebook live and then immediately regret it and then just try to get out before they know I'm there. Last weekend I clicked on my buddy's Facebook live. He was showing his daughter's ballet recital. I quickly just try to X out, and then I hear a voice say, Brian Bates, thanks for joining us. Cassie's going to be so excited, you tuned in her ballet recital. I looked at his followers. One, me. I was his entire audience, so I had to stay. I was stuck watching his daughter's ballet recital for three hours on my phone. <laughs> I'd rather have been there in person. Because then, I could have been on my phone. <laughs> I don't have kids, but I wish I had kids because I notice even ugly parents can have cute kids. <laughs> Some people are looking at each other right now. <laughs> Come on, we've all seen that before. Cute little kid and you're like, oh, you are so cute. And then you see his parents, and you're like, oh, this will not last. Mm. You've got maybe three years. Uh, you've got his eyes now, but you're pretty soon you'll just have this whole face, and that's not going to be good for anyone. I have a, a niece, she's grown now, but uh, when she was young, I used to babysit her, and that was a lot of fun. Um, I was constantly looking for ways to um, play with her while resting. Um, <laughs> it's very exhausting, I'll say that. Like one time she said, come on Uncle Brian, let's race. And I said, I got a better idea. How about you race and I'll time you? She's like, time me? Why? And I said, well then you could tell your friends at school on Monday morning how fast you ran to the mailbox and back. Amazingly, this worked. I learned that kids love to be timed. It's an ego thing. I play on their ego. If they want to go to school, tell their friends how great they did something. So now I did it, started doing it all the time. Quick, pick up your toys. I'll time you. Quick, brush your teeth. I'll time you. And it was fun for me because I could just sit back. Now, sometimes I felt bad watching her just run back and forth doing stuff, <laughs> knowing no one's going to care. <laughs> but then I thought, you know what? I'm getting her some free exercise. And we know as adults, you got to spend money to stay in shape. Fitness centers, they're very expensive. 
Yoga places, even more so. Marathons, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. <laughs> how do they convince us to spend money on a marathon? Hey, how'd you like to spend a lot of money to run 26.2 miles? Uh, I don't know. Uh, where would I be running? On well, the exact same streets you could run for free any other day of the year. Uh, I don't know about this. This does not seem like a good idea. Okay, how about this? What if we time you? Yeah. Time me? Now that sounds great. Then I could go to work on Monday morning and tell my coworkers how fast I ran. They'll be so interested. <laughs> but I was watching the news the other night with my buddy, the one who believes in professional wrestling, and they said that this Japanese billionaire is going to send, uh, he's going to go on a trip around the moon. He's going to spend over a million dollars to go on this trip sometime later this year. My dumb friend looks at me and goes, tell you what, man, <laughs> have to spend over a million dollars to go around the moon. Better make sure it's a full moon. <laughs> What? <laughs> he said, I'm just saying, I don't want to get my money's worth. I want to see the whole thing. <laughs> Think how mad you'd be if you spent all that money and got up there, it's just one of those little slivers. <laughs> <sighs> I say dumb things too, though even when I'm trying to say the right thing. Recently, uh, I was walking to the bank and there was a soldier walking out. I thought, I'm gonna hold the door for this man and thank him for his service to our country. Now that's a good idea, but what ended up happening was, I held the door for him, he says thank you, and I, in the most creepy way possible, say, no sir, thank you. <laughs> and just gaze at him as he walks out the door. He looked back at me like, I am fighting for everyone's freedom, sir, except yours. <laughs> you stay away from me. <laughs> I was watching the news the other night with my girlfriend, and there was a story about a uh, woman that was missing. They think she'd been abducted, and they were giving her description out on the news. And that is very scary, but my girlfriend's already told me I have nothing to worry about, because she'll never allow anything to ever happen to her that will require the news to have to give out her weight. <laughs> And she's not even overweight, but ladies, I've learned that is a delicate subject and that ain't getting out. If she does disappear, I will be a prime suspect because I will not cooperate with the police. <laughs> because I know she will not let me. They'll be like, won't you give us her weight? And I, well, first of all, if I'm being honest, I have no idea what it is because she's never told me. I have her pin number, if that would help. <laughs> And secondly, even if I did know, I wouldn't tell you because I'd rather be in jail than murdered by her. <laughs> I would just probably show him a picture of her and say, well, what do you guys think she weighs? Because I have no idea. Keep in mind she was starting the keto diet when she was abducted. <laughs> so assuming her abductors will let her eat a low carb diet, <laughs> she was hoping to lose 15 pounds by Easter. Guys, can you imagine how much trouble you'd be in if you jumped the gun and reported your wife missing and then she just comes home a few hours later and turns on the news? <laughs> be on the lookout for this woman. Her husband says she's 42, 43, definitely early 40s, he thinks. <laughs> he says she has brown hair, but she colors it, so it could be gray by now. <laughs> He says he thinks she's about five foot six and weighs between a deuce, deuce and a half. <laughs> People like to ask, uh, as a comedian, what's a good bombing story you have? And I got a lot to choose from, and uh, I'll share this story. Um, last summer, I got hired to do a job uh, for the Wilson County Livestock Association. 
in Lebanon, Tennessee. And if you don't know where Lebanon is, that is the home of Cracker Barrel, but more importantly for this story, the home of my mom and everyone I grew up with. <laughs> The Wilson County Livestock Association is a wonderful organization, but they called me and said, we'd love for you to come perform. We're raising money for scholarships for kids who want to go on to agricultural degrees and things like that. We're going to auction off items, so if you have any comedy CDs you'd like to donate, we would love that. And I said, sure, I'll be glad to give you a comedy CD. Then they said, we want you to come do some comedy for us. And I said, I would love it. Sign me up. I immediately called my mom, said, Mom, guess what? You're finally going to get to see me do some comedy. I'm coming to Lebanon to do a show for you. She said, I'm going to call everybody I know. We're going to tell them we're going to come on out. I said, all right, that's great. Um, I went and picked her up, drove her there. First sign that it might be a tough show was it was at an outdoor picnic pavilion. Outdoor picnic pavilion is always fun for comedy. Um, that's a joke. And um, it was during the daytime, always fun for comedy again, daytime comedy. It was about uh, 95 outside, which was um, also the average age of the people there. <laughs> I'm thinking, this might be a tough gig. And then they came up and said, you know, your opening act, he's going to be from the county processor's office. He wants to talk about a proposed tax increase. <laughs> I'm like, okay, it's a little bit of a different opener, but sure. Um, I'm thinking, at least they'll like me more than the guy talking about the proposed tax increase. Uh, I was dead wrong. <laughs> uh, we tied in laughs, but they were much more interested in what he had to say about that tax increase. So then I get up there and I bomb and I bomb and I bomb some more. And I can sense my mom thinking, why did I invite all my friends? And I finally bomb so much, I just have to get done. So I was like, thank you folks very much. And usually when I bomb like that, I just run and hide in the green room. But this is an outdoor picnic pavilion. There is no green room. So I just had to sit back down at the picnic table with the people I just bombed in front of. I just had to swing my leg over and just sit back down with two people that didn't laugh at one bit. So now the auction started and people are really getting into this auction. They are bidding on feeding troughs and bags of feed and um, the grand prize was a live heifer, which again, I thought was a large woman, but it's actually a cow. <laughs> and they are bidding, bidding, bidding away. And I don't care that they're so into it. I'm so happy no one's focused on me now. I just don't want anyone to even think about me. And right when I think I'm done. The auctioneer says, all right, folks, now it's time to bid on this comedy CD from that guy you just saw. And everything gets quiet again. <laughs> and now they're like, oh, man, we had to sit through that. Now we have to spend money on him? No, thank you. And I'm like, please, someone just bid on this CD. And I'm looking down. I'm like, oh, please don't make my mom have to buy this CD. <laughs> and I look over at her. She's looking down like, I did not want to have to buy this CD. <laughs> I still have to live here. Finally, the auction's over, and I'm ready to go, but my mom rode with me, so I can't just run out of there. She's at a different picnic, bitch. So I have to kind of slide over and grab her, and um, I finally said, you ready to go? And she's like, you know what? I might just take an Uber. Um, <laughs> but we both realized that uh, I'm the only person in Lebanon, Tennessee, who's driving an Uber at that time, so I just went and grabbed the car, swung it around. She got in the back seat, and we drove home for 20 minutes, and she never said a word about it. And that's the woman I mentioned at the beginning of the show. <laughs> But you guys have been a wonderful crowd. Thank y'all so much, everybody. Thank you. Have a good night. Local man robs Wendy's with alligator. We're the alligator boys now. And the lady they sent them to the bank, she be going, Mom.